I think it's safe to say I found my preferred VR football game in 2MD VR Football Unleashed. But I want more. I want to find the best virtual reality experience of every sport I enjoy playing. American football is by far my preferred sport, and a not so close second is basketball. Unfortunately, at the time of making this, there aren't any VR basketball games available on the Quest Store, and since that's my platform of choice, that didn't leave me with a ton of options. Thanks to App Lab, though, there's a couple we can play on the Quest. They just aren't quality tested by Oculus and might be pretty wonky, but I'll take my chances. The one that stood out to me the most is Hoops Madness, which is a whopping $6. What the hell, let's give it a shot, no pun intended. When you start up the game, you're thrown into a locker room and are immediately prompted to make an account for the game. Mmm, this is annoying. I know it can't sync up with Oculus account info since it's not an official game by them, but I don't want to have to plug in my email by pointing and clicking on each letter. Twice. And when you point at different menu items, the cursor locks onto them, which makes navigating all interfaces janky as hell, and it's made even worse when having to type a long-ass email. But after you get past that, it never really gets in the way. Turning left, you'll see another board that gives you the option to host a game, find a game, or play solo. The illusion of free choice. There's not a soul playing this game online in 2022, and that's not a great indicator for the game to come. But hey, it's not the biggest deal. Maybe we found a hidden gem here. When you start a solo game, you enter this gymnasium that looks pretty nice, and have the chance to practice some shots, and... Oh, okay then. The game likes to crash occasionally when you go to pick up the ball for the first time upon booting it up, which made such a bad first impression my first time trying the game. And while it's happened a couple times since, that's the only instance of that kind of thing happening. Performance otherwise is honestly stellar, there's hardly ever a dip in framerate, and it's an overwhelmingly smooth experience on both the Quest and Quest 2. The footage may not look all that, but that's because I've got to capture it straight from the Quest. The PC version needs room scale cameras I don't have. But I assure you that when you're playing it, it looks really good. Anyways, the most important thing for a motion controlling basketball game to nail is obviously the throwing mechanics, and in my opinion, they did a great job, but it could really use some fine tuning. No, it doesn't feel like you're throwing a real basketball. Throwing a virtual version of a ball is never going to feel identical to throwing a real one. The controllers just can't do that, but given those restrictions, it's solid. You have the option to pick up and throw the ball with either the grip or the trigger, and can adjust your throw power, both of which are very important things to allow players to change for themselves. I don't think the grip is very ideal, given the placement on the controller, but using the trigger causes a small issue to arise that can lead to further imperfections. When I normally go to shoot, the base of the controller will move out of my hand, as I'm focusing more on the top of the controller, and as a result, throwing can tend to sway more to one side fairly often. It's not the fault of the game, it's more of an issue that comes with emulating a basketball throwing mechanic with these Quest controllers, and it's really not a big deal. Though it feels a bit unnatural at first to secure the bottom of the controller while doing this, it's not long before it becomes second nature, and once that happens, you're all set. I was honestly surprised by how little my throws got shanked for no reason. Every game like this is gonna have that here and there, but it's relatively rare here and that's a big plus. Time and time again, I've praised the throwing mechanics in 2MD, I really think they nailed it in that regard, and while this game doesn't quite provide the basketball equivalent to that, it's still very solid. And for what it's worth, it's far better than MVP football's throwing mechanics, as it's less prone to error and allows the player more control. That game was so imprecise with throwing, and even completing huge passes just was not satisfying in any way. I know these are totally different sports and require a vastly different throwing style to be successful, but I still think it's valuable to compare how well they capture the feeling of their respective sports. While not perfect, the throwing mechanics here are a ton of fun to screw around with, and the gymnasium provides you a sandbox area to do just that. There's even a board on the side that gives you a ton of different shot ideas to try, and it encourages you to mix them up yourself. I like bouncing one ball up super high and throwing another one at it mid-air to launch it toward the net. It's dumb that the game doesn't count as a shot, but it's still rewarding to pull off. The next most important thing for a VR basketball game to get down is movement, and it doesn't just let you freely move with the control stick. You have to instead hold A, point to where you want to move to, and let go, which teleports you there. While this is common in VR games, that doesn't mean I like it a whole lot. Despite this more strict means of movement, you can dribble, but it's not very fluid at all. You hold down whichever button you selected to be your grab button, and make a throwing motion toward the ground. You don't let go of the hold button though, so it feels very weird and relies on the game to pick up on the fact that you're attempting a dribble. It's not required that you dribble for any of the modes though, it's just there to give players something, so it doesn't lower the quality of any actual gameplay. There's six modes in the game, and each one is a short, arcade-like challenge that provides a decently unique gameplay experience. Each one has a time limit, and by scoring more points than your opponents, you win. Around the world is exactly what you think. You get five shots from a bunch of different spots, and if you make all five, you get extra points. Whack-a-hoop has a ton of baskets pop up, and by making the shot before they disappear, you score. 
Tug of War has a double sided hoop in the center of the court, and when you make a shot, it moves toward your opponent. Whoever has the net on their side at the end loses. Shootout is exactly that make more shots and get the most points. In Hoop Derby, you and your opponents each have one hoop on the same side of the court, and the goal is to make it farther than everyone else. When you make a shot, you move forward two spaces, and when you miss, you go back one, which forces you to be way more cautious with your throws. And finally, Dominion. Dominion which surrounds you and your opponents with nets, and when you make a shot, it essentially makes you claim that net, and whoever has the most by the time the clock hits zero is the winner. They're all very easy to understand, and allow players to immediately have fun with them, which is partially thanks to the tutorial. Each game has a short, tabletop demonstration that does a great job of showing exactly how the game works, and I really appreciate this. It seems like this game has everything it needs to be an awesome experience, but due to the lack of people actually playing it, it's not all too worth checking out. The solo mode was an obvious afterthought, there's not even CPUs to play with, you're competing with nobody and it gets very boring very quickly. But if you're able to convince some friends to pick it up as well, the game can offer one hell of a time. Setting up matches is a breeze, and even with a not so great internet connection, everything works seamlessly. While you and your friends are standing in the same virtual space, you aren't really interacting with one another, which allows some connection jumps here and there to be unnoticeable and hardly tamper with the immersion. You're mostly just focused on what you're doing, you're not paying attention to the other players, and there's never any lag or interference with that, so it's great. Playing with friends really unlocks the true potential of this game. It's a blast to genuinely compete with someone, and the challenges the game provides are each fun in their own regard. I see my buddy and I going back to play this fairly often. It's a phenomenal multiplayer experience, and the only major issue it has is a severe lack of content. Each of the six modes typically takes around two minutes to beat. Sure, it's a good time, but it's only entertaining for like an hour, and adding a mode for a more traditional basketball game isn't as easy as it sounds. Thanks to clunky dribbling and player movement, as well as a lack of CPUs to fill in teams, it's quite an undertaking to just add that as a mode, but with a few additions and some hard work, I think it's totally feasible. For starters, players need to be able to move with the control stick, just have forward lock to the end of the court the ball is moving toward. On top of that, improvements have to be made to dribbling so you can let go of the ball and bounce it yourself, and additional mechanics for blocking and stealing need to be implemented as well. My initial thought was to make it play just like the Wii Sports Resort pickup games, but I don't think a 3 on 3 type game like that is really possible in VR. If you got 5 people to play with you, it absolutely would be, but switching perspectives every time the ball is passed would be very disorienting. I know a very similar thing is done in the 2MD manual receiving, and it can be very difficult for beginners, but in a setting like this that would only be magnified. Plus, when switching from QB to receiver, it pauses for a second or two to let you readjust to your new surroundings, which is totally necessary, but when possession changes fairly often, it could really drag things out and be annoying for people on defense. I'd say a simple one-on-one -on -one pickup game would be the most doable, as you wouldn't need to worry about passing or anything, just getting past one opponent and making a shot. That's just an idea though, I'd like to try and come up with ways these types of games could be improved to hopefully spark some changes. However, I don't see this one being added to, considering the lack of people talking about it and actively playing. Honestly, the game reminds me a lot of 2MD just a year or two ago. It's got solid throwing mechanics and a great foundation to build off of, except True and Pixel continuously updated 2MD, and it seems like the devs at VR Studios Inc. have really left this one to die. I think it's an enjoyable game, and it's not a very expensive one either. Like, you're really not going to find many VR games that are cheaper than this, let alone ones that don't suck. While that price is indeed reflected in the amount of content the game offers, if you're looking for VR games to play with friends, this is absolutely one to check out, especially if you love basketball. But if you don't have anyone to play with, I'd definitely pass on it. Personally, I'm not satisfied with ending my search here. The game leaves a lot to be desired, and if you know of some other VR basketball games that top this one, let me know down below so I can check it out in the future. I don't plan to get back to the topic right away, but it would help out a ton when that time eventually comes. In the meantime, consider checking out my video on the latest 2MD update. On top of a manual receiving mode, it adds a plethora of new features to the game that you probably didn't know about. 